In this tutorial, I'd like to look at the uh, relationship between the second derivative of the potential energy and the stability of a mechanical system. So the usual way in which we describe this or one sees this in books is you see this diagram here where you have this sort of bowl here with a, a mass in the middle of it. And then we say, well, the bowl is described by the potential energy. And if the second derivative is positive, then we say the system is stable. And that if the second derivative were negative, we have the bowl flipped around and that the ball sitting on top of here is unstable. And then we can also have the case where the potential energy at second derivative is equal to zero. And we call that neutral stability because we can place the ball anywhere on this surface here and it just stays where it is. So, so this is the sort of the pictorial uh, description that we usually see in books and texts describing stability in the second derivative. What I'd like to do is look at this in a bit more technical detail to see where this really comes from. So, and for that purpose, what I'd like to do is look at a gravitational pendulum. So we're going to have a pendulum with a point mass, mass m, and the pendulum can swing. It's going to swing with some angle theta here. And this pivot over here is going to be frictionless. So if, it, if the pendulum has swung, say, an amount theta, then its distance from the reference position when it's hanging straight down is going to be equal this length. Let's give the length of the pendulum L. This will be L 1 minus cosine theta. So let's first go ahead and write down the potential energy of the system. So this is a gravitational pendulum. So we have gravity acting down and z is being measured this way. So the potential energy f for my pendulum is mass gravitational acceleration times z, which I can write as mass gravitational acceleration L 1 minus cosine theta. So in this case here, the potential energy pi is a function of theta. So we're going to use this latter expression over here. Um, the equilibrium of the system comes by requiring stationarity of the potential energy. So the torque on the system in particular is the negative derivative of the potential energy with respect to the rotation. And that, using my expression here, can be written as minus mgl sine theta. Okay. Now, for equilibrium, this all has to equal 0 here. So looking at that equation, we can solve it for theta. And we find there's two solutions. One is theta equals 0. And so that's when the mass hangs straight down. And the other solution is theta is equal to pi. And that's when the mass is actually flipped around and is right above the support. So in this case here, we, we're measuring theta in this direction here, so theta equals pi. So clearly, in these two pictures here, we would say that this is stable. Our intuition tells us that. And this is unstable, right? And the intuition that we're using here is that in the second system, if I were to perturb the pendulum slightly, then gravity, which is pointing down, is just simply going to drive the pendulum all the way down. So it's going to drive it away from this equilibrium position of being straight up. Whereas if I were to look at the other solution here, if I were to perturb the pendulum, say, to the left, then gravity, in this case here, is going to drive the pendulum back towards the equilibrium uh, position. So this is what we mean by stability. And we can write down mathematically what's going on here and actually relate this system to the second derivative of the potential energy. So, so let's have a look first in a, a bit more detail at the, the mathematics here. So let, let's consider each case separately and then we'll work our way to a general result. So let's look first at the case of theta equals zero. So that's the case where the pendulum is hanging straight down. And let's consider a perturbation of the position. So theta will be now its equilibrium position plus some perturbation. I'll say del theta. Del theta is some number that is rather small. And so if del theta happens to be positive, then 
what I'm looking at is a perturbation of the pendulum to the right. And in this case here, if I evaluate the torque on the system, so theta at zero plus del theta, what I'll see is that this is a negative number because remember the expression for the torque here is minus mgl sine theta. And so if I evaluate that for del theta being positive, sine will be positive, I have minus sine here, and so I'll get a negative torque. So negative torque means that it's going to bring it back towards equilibrium. Likewise, if I consider del theta negative, I'll have a situation that looks like this. And in this case here, the torque zero plus del theta is going to be positive. And so that gives me a restoring torque back towards the equilibrium. If we have a look at the case of theta equals pi, so that's the situation where the mass is sitting above the support. Now in the case of del theta being positive, I have a situation that looks like this. And in this case here, the torque expression, so pi plus del theta, is going to give me, so let's look at that, that's going to be a number that's going to give me a negative value for the sign, and we have a minus sign out there, so here the torque is in the positive sense, and it moves us away from the equilibrium. If we look at del theta being negative, So then in this case here, the pendulum is slightly to the right of vertical here. If I evaluate the torque on the system for pi plus del theta, I'll see that it's actually negative. So it's driving the system in the opposite direction. So in other words, away from, from equilibrium. So, and so what we'd like to do is sort of write this out a little more formally now. So, so what we have in general is we have the torque at some equilibrium position plus a perturbation. And I can expand this in a Taylor series and say the torque evaluated at the equilibrium plus the derivative of the torque with respect to theta evaluated at the equilibrium, so I'm doing a Taylor series about theta equilibrium times del theta. So I'll just retain the first two terms of the Taylor series. Well, at equilibrium, the torque is equal to zero, and the torque itself is minus the derivative of the potential. So this is minus two derivatives of the potential with respect to the angle evaluated at the equilibrium position times del theta, okay? And what we want is that for del theta greater than or equal to zero, we want a restoring torque. Okay, and what that means is that we want a torque that is negative. So if we move in a positive sense, we want the torque to resist that. So it should be have the opposite sign. So well that is going to tell me that second derivative of the potential necessarily must be equal to zero for stability. Likewise, if del theta is negative for stability, we're going to want that the torque be positive because if we move it in a negative direction we want the torque to go opposite to that so to be positive and that also then tells us that the second derivative of the potential needs to be zero for or greater than zero for stability so this is sort of a derivation of this statement that we make that the second derivative of potential energy needs to be positive for stability. And you can see also that if 
the second derivative happens to be negative, that in this case here, the torque on the system is going to be in the same direction as the perturbation, and this is then going to lead to an unstable system. And that, in other words, that the torque that's going to be exerted on the system is going to continue to push the system away from equilibrium.